Hello everybody, <clears throat> my name is Olga Carneiro and I teach at the University of Minho and I am a researcher of the Institute for Polymers and Composites of the same university. So this presentation is about a new numerical modeling code that was developed to, to hide the design of profile extrusion calibrators. So the outline is, is this one, so first I will make a, um, an introduction to explain what a, calibration, a calibrator is and uh, why it is important and the motivation behind this work. Then I will say some words about the implementation and verification of the new numerical code and then I will illustrate is, uh, its usefulness uh, with a case study, starting by the modeling, the, geom the definition of geometry, the boundary conditions, and the uh, mesh sensitivity study. And then uh, I will perform the assessment of this code with an experimental work. And finally, <clears throat> I will try to uh, illustrate uh, the sensitivity of the code to the variation of some of the process parameters. And finally, the conclusions will be drawn. So, this is an extrusion line for the production of profiles, thermoplastic profiles. In uh, extrusion line, we have the extruder uh, that melts the polymer and, and pumps it to the extrusion die. The extrusion die shapes the, the polymer melt into the desired uh, geometry profile. Then we have the calibrator or calibration and cooling system here uh, that cools down the, the profile while guaranteeing its external uh, geometry. Then we have the, the wall off system that pulls the profile at a constant speed and finally we can have a saw that <coughs> will uh, um, cut the profile in the required length. So, what is a calibrator? Uh, the calibrator is, is this type of tool that we, we have here uh, uh, drawing. So, this is the internal part of the calibrator that shapes the external uh, geometry of, of the profile because it is very difficult to obtain, uh, just using the extrusion die, the, the required geometry due to some viscoelastic effects and also due to some post-extrusion phenomena. So it is composed by two halves generally and uh, it has some vacuum slots and these are used to um, increase the contact, the efficiency of the contact between the plastic profile, which is hot, and the cooled uh, calibrator, so to, to accelerate the, the cooling down of the material. And it has also um, water cooling channels uh, where uh, cooled uh, water uh, circulates. So here you can see uh, another, uh, another view of a calibrator and uh, a profile, um, extruded profile. Okay, so uh, what what are uh, the the problems here? So we we would like to have a, a solver to be able to predict or to compute the temperature uh, field in the polymer um, that is being extruded uh, to to be able to have in at the outlet of the calibration system uh, to have the required temperature that is a temperature in at which the material will not uh, suffer uh, post uh, deformations and also to be able to minimize the developed uh, thermal uh, thermal stresses so <clears throat> our aim is to have a fast cool and simultaneously to have a, a relatively low or as low as possible standard deviation of the temperature field uh, in the cross section of the profile at the calibrator outlet. And these two objectives are conflicting. So that's why it's difficult to, to draw or to to design these tools because we have two conflicting objectives and we have a lot, uh, a great amount of, of um, parameters. Uh, I can just refer some. So, for example, we, we can have just one calibrator 
in the calibration system or, or two or three calibrators in series, as we will see, for example, in the case study that we will present, we can have several cooling channels, uh, a different number of cooling channels. Uh, they can have different layouts. The water can be at different temperatures in each calibrator. Um, we can have different lengths for, for each calibrator. We can have different distances between them. So we have a lot uh, to, to play with, let's say, uh, in order to optimize these systems. So uh, in this, in this um, presentation, I, I will just present briefly the solver that was developed previously in the OpenFOAM uh, computational library framework. And uh, this was already published in a paper in the Thermal Engineering, so you can see the, the, all the details. And uh, then I, I will um, experimentally validate this solver and to illustrate its potential to add the design of industrial relevant profile calibrators. <clears throat> so the, the, uh, the equation that we have to, to solve is the energy equation. So um, two, two uh, conditions can or situations can be considered here. So whether we have perfect thermal contact at the polymer calibrator interface, uh, and in this case we have continuity of the temperature and the, uh, the heat flux at the interface between the, the polymer and the calibrator or in more realistic situation, in real situations, we have a thermal contact resistance at the interface. So in this case, we have a discontinuity uh, of temperature at the interface and this is the, 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 the most important case to be considered in real problems. So the, the, the method we use here uh, we have already a solver to do this, to, to compute the temperature field at the outlet of the calibration system. But the, that solver had some, some, some problems uh, or limitations. So it was <clears throat> only um, capable to, to, to work with the structured meshes. So it was not uh, the most adequate one to deal with the complex profile shapes that we have in real problems. And uh, on the other side, uh, this was um, it was based on a com the common approach that it was to solve sequentially for both phases, because we have both phases here, the polymer and the metallic uh, calibrator. Uh, the, the energy uh, equation until convergence. So the coupling between the two phases is achieved by imposing the heat flux by, based on, on the equations uh, that are valid at the interface both uh, perfect contact or um, thermal resistance. So in this case we, we will see that we will have only one one equation, and this equation will be valid for the two, for the two phases or the two different domains, plastic and metallic calibrator. So for doing this, we we use the conditional volume averaging technique, and uh, <coughs> we define mixture quantities. Um, so each uh, volume, uh, each cell, can have a different volume fraction of each phase, uh, polymer, polymer, and, and calibrator. Okay, so the, the final equation that was uh, derived is this one, and uh, as, I, as I said, it, it enabled us to compute uh, the temperature in all the domain, including plastic and, uh, and calibrator. So the boundary conditions uh, that were considered or were both the radiation and convection. So we, we can take into consideration the heat losses by these two, <coughs> these two ways, uh, radiation and convection, at the outer uh, surfaces of the profile and of the calibrators. And uh, we did uh, um, the verification of this of this uh, new solver was done uh, through a method of the manufacturer solutions. 
and also <coughs> to detect some eventual discretization errors. And uh, we used also uh, some 2D um, problems, simple problems, that have analytical solutions. So in this case, we used two uh, just opposed uh, slabs uh, that are here illustrated, um, that were at different initial temperatures, 100 degrees and 180 degrees, and we used also two uh, concentric hollow cylinders <clears throat> that were also at the two initial different temperatures, the same as in the previous case. So I'm not going to describe all this. This is in the paper that I referred previously. We considered <clears throat> for the slab and for the hollow cylinders both hexahedral and tetrahedral meshes. And we considered also uh, the two cases, so at the interface perfect contact and contact resistance. So here you can see I am just showing some of the results. So we have here the exact solution and the predict solution for the case, in this case, of perfect contact where there is no <coughs> where there is no discontinuity in the temperature. So the 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 interface is here in the middle of the of the system. Um, here is just the illustration of the other of the other simple geometry, the hollow, the two hollow concentric cylinders, and here I used the the other condition, so the contact resistance, where uh, we have here this discontinuity at the the middle of the system, at the interface between the two cylinders that are at different temperatures initially, we have this discontinuity. Of temperature. So the exact and the predict solutions are quite similar, so we were confident in, in this code. Uh, finally, we, we tried to use this with a, with a real problem. So we have in this case a polycarbonate swimming pool cover uh, profile, so this is a cross-section of the profile that has been produced by a company that was also involved in this work. Uh, this is the, the calibration system that they used. So they have three calibrators in series, as you can see, uh, with a zigzag uh, cooling channel, both in the upper and, and the bottom <coughs> surfaces of the, the, the profile. And they, they have a, a certain distance between them. So this is a photograph of the real uh, extrusion line that produces the, the, the profile that you can see here in these annealing zones in between two different calibrators. Again, this is the extruder and the extrusion die. And <coughs> these were the, the conditions that they were being used. So these are the lengths of each calibrator, all different as you can see. And the temperature of the cooling fluid, in this case it was water, was 70 degrees centigrade in the two first calibrators and 18 degrees in the third calibrator. So this, these temperatures were selected uh, based on previous experiences uh, that this um, industrial company did in the past. <coughs> Furthermore, so we have these distances between the die outlet here, number two, and the first calibrator, 15 millimeters, and then we have 35 here between the calibrator two and three, and 55 between the calibrator two and three. In terms of boundary conditions, so we used um, adiabatic conditions at the outlet. Um, we have a, a temperature imposed at the inlet of the system. So this is the extrusion temperature that we are assuming that is uniform. Okay. So we, we considered also that the, the internal walls, these internal ribs, at the internal surface of the profile we have diabatic conditions. Um, in the cooling channels, we have an imposed temperature, so we consider that they were uh, 
at a constant temperature, uh, the water temperature that was defined previously, 70 and 18 degrees, uh, depending on the calibrator, and uh, we consider uh, the realistic case, which is the thermal contact between the profile, the plastic profile, and the metallic calibrator. So we consider that there is um, a heat transfer uh, coefficient here, which is the inverse of the contact thermal contact resistance, and consider natural losses by natural convection by the external surfaces of both the profile and the calibrator. So these are the properties of the materials involved in this case study. So the properties, the thermal, thermal properties of polycarbonate, the thermal properties of the stainless steel uh, used to produce the calibrators, and we consider for, for the, um, the losses by convection, we consider the NAIR heat transfer coefficient uh, typical, it's 5 watt. 5 watts per square meter degree Kelvin and uh, for the polymer calibrator interface we consider a, a typical also heat transfer coefficient this, this, this coefficient was based in, in previous measurements that we did with the prototype that we designed for, for this purpose so this is the linear extrusion speed of the line and the inlet temperature, the constant uh, temperature at the inlet of the system, and the room temperature. So first, we before using the, the, the new code to, to perform the simulation of the real case, we did a, a mesh sensitivity study uh, with meshes with different numbers of cells. So these are the meshes that we used with uh, half a million, more or less, uh, computational cells, uh, more than 4 millions and more than 35 millions. And uh, here I am showing the temperature, the evolution of the temperature in a specific, in this specific point of the profile, the plastic profile, so along all the system, the calibration system. So as you can see, uh, the trend is the expected one, and um, we see that uh, the results that are provided by MESH2 and MESH3, which is the most refined here in blue, so are similar essentially at this final part of the system, and of course we are interested in what happens at the outlet of the system. Uh, this is the same, but considering another point of the profile, once again you can see that there are relatively uh, big differences between the least refined mesh, but mesh 2 and mesh 3 uh, also um, predicts uh, similar, similar results. And this is another point, in this case, um, one point of the internal wall of the profile or of the reed. And again, you have uh, similar results for mesh 2 and 3. We did another thing, which was to compute at the, the system outlet, uh, we compute the average temperature of the cross-section of the profile at the, dial, uh, at the, sorry, the calibration system outlet, and we, we did the same for the standard, the corresponding standard deviation of this temperature. And uh, <clears throat> these results were normalized uh, with the most refined mesh ones, so with M3 results. And again, we can see that the results are, are quite similar between mesh 2 and mesh 3. Okay. So for, for both, for both uh, average temperature and standard deviation. So, uh, having this in mind, we select M2 to proceed with the simulations uh, of this system. So this is the typical mesh in the cross-section of the of a calibrator, okay, where you can see a more 
we find mesh here in the vicinity uh, vicinity of the extrude profile and this is uh, the mesh corresponding to the complete system of the three calibrators so what we did was to measure the temperature in the profile using uh, an infrared um, camera uh, at specific points okay and we compared the, the, the temperature, the experimental temperature, which are here three and here another three and one at the outlet of the system. And we compared with the computed, computed values. Okay, as you can see, there are slight differences here between calibrator one and two, but the result at the system outlet, which is the more important, is the most important one, uh, is is the same. So here we have we have to, to say that we, we did several measurements, but we have it's difficult to 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 measure the temperature in such a narrow uh, space. So it was difficult to obtain these points, especially here where the distance between the calibrators were was very small. So after having um, validated uh, experimentally the code we did some studies just to show or to try to, to, to conclude uh, that the numerical code was capable to predict differences in average temperature and standard deviation of the temperature at the system outlet. So we consider as the reference case the, the existing, the, the one that is working at the, the company. So, and with our, um, with our simulations, we, we, we obtained these results for the average temperature at the system outlet and the standard deviation. And then we, we used, instead of the zigzag uh, layout for the cooling channels, we used six cooling channels, straight cooling channels. So three on the top surface and three on the bottom and also this other case considering uh, the double so six uh, cooling channels in each face uh, so as you can see there are differences that they are not huge but the the code is capable to to retrieve different different uh, results by the end, so there are differences in the average temperature and also differences in the standard deviation. Of course, the, the, the optimal solution would be that that uh, retrieve the, 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 the lower average temperature and simultaneously the, the lower uh, standard deviation. But as I said, these are conflicting objectives and generally when one of these increases, the other decreases. So then we, 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 we tried to use just one calibrator, having exactly the same uh, total length of the, uh, the three calibrators that now are being used. And uh, we, we could uh, conclude that uh, this, is, sorry, this is the average temperature of the extra date, and this is the standard deviation temperature of the extra date. So, considering the temperature field in each cross section along the calibrator and uh, after, so at the at downstream the, the calibrator. So, as you can see, the calibrator is ineffective, um, more or less during half of its length, being only effective during the first uh, middle uh, length. So. This is a nice, a nice result, since we can, we can um, try to optimize the existing system uh, using the first calibrator with this length, so half of the total calibration length, and then distributing uh, the remaining half by two other calibrators. So that's what we did. We, we, we did several trials uh, using a different distribution for the length of the three calibrators. So this is the, the existing one, okay? So these are the other that we are just trying with always the same length for the first calibration. 
calibrator, which is half of the total calibrator, uh, calibration length, and then we divide in different ways uh, the two the two lengths of the other two um, calibrators. Then we also uh, played with the temperature of the water, so in each calibrator, and we obtained different uh, results, as you can see here, for the average temperature of the extrudate and also for the standard deviation. So the code proved to be sensitive to uh, the main parameters of the extrusion line. So, um, in conclusion, um, so I can say that a, a, three, a new 3D solver that uses unstructured meshes was de developed in the open form computational library framework and it's intended in this case to model the cooling stage in profile extrusion but of course it can be used in other situations and eventually in uh, situations where we have two phases that do not have a sharp interface as we have here and this solver was verified and experimentally assessed with success and the solver is capable to compute the temperature distribution in a two uh, domain or two phase system polymer and calibrator in this case and uh, to account for the discontinuity that exists uh, at the interface of these two uh, domains so it can be used uh, in the future to optimize the thermal design of calibrators for complex profiles and therefore it will be very help helpful to shorten the time uh, needed to design these type of tools. So thank you very much for your attention.